Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel. My name is Shanks and today we're gonna continue with the World Championship 2020 for BFME 2, the Rise of the Witch King on the patch 2.02 version 8.4. It's gonna be a best of 5 between Ferry from Belgium against Traki from Jersey. Before losing any more time, let's get it started. And here we go. On the left side of the map, we have the pink goblin player Fairy against the orange Mordo player Traki. This is the map Holin Molin edits, by the way. We have four war players on this map. In the middle, two. At the top left side, one. At the bottom right side, one. And we have also the troll layers protecting those ends. At the bottom side, but also at the top side. This is the version 8.4, by the way, guys. We switched to the version 8.4 a couple of days ago. And. As we're gonna go on in this game, I will try to explain you guys what the changes are. If you wanna follow all these games on my live stream, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards, the link is gonna be in the video description down below. As we're gonna finish the round of 16 very soon, and gonna start with the quarterfinals. Two slaughterhouses into the orc pit, into the third slaughterhouse from the player from Jersey. His name is Trucky. On the other side, we see two tunnels into the first goblin cave, into the third tunnel. Alright, powerpoint wise, goblin player is gonna start with the Warchant and Mordor player is actually gonna start with the Eye of Sauron. Mordor got nerfed big time in terms of trolls, but orcs got buffed. So the orcs they're gonna deal a little bit more damage now and you are also gonna be able to buy upgrades on them. So heavy armor, forge blades and even banner carrier, which was always the case. <laughs> but I mean, banner carrier was always the case, heavy armor and forge blades are new now. Roll Cage is coming up anyway for Traki though, after 3 slaughterhouses and a orc pit. So let's see how effective those trolls are gonna be. They will need much more time to level up by the way guys, and also the eat a orc to heal up ability has a cooldown now. After eating a orc to heal up, you will have to wait 30 seconds. Alright. Barry is creeping the work layer at the top left side right now with those goblin warriors. We have second goblin cave and even a third goblin cave coming up for the player from Belgium. On the other side we have orcs moving forward. Let's see how effective they're gonna be now against goblins. Even though I gotta say that in a 1v1 situation goblins are still way better than orcs, but they will be actually able to contest this creep here from Barry and that's huge. If Traki can steal the creep and the treasure, that would be massive. For the player from Jersey. He's gonna try his best to do that. At the very same time, it, tu it turns out that Goblin player Fairy is actually focusing on the creeps much more than going for harassment. And his builders are also not expanding very well towers to the side of Trucky. Okay, let's see who's gonna get the creep here. Alright. Oh, lucky drop here for Fairy. He was also able to grab all the treasure. And Mordor Orcs, they didn't even get the last hit on the creep. So very lucky, but also risky at the same time from Fairy. Alright, three Goblin Warriors in the middle. And Warchan is still available for the Goblin player Fairy. As well as Eye of Sauron for the Mordor player Traki. And we have the first Mountain Troll already on the field. Uh, the cost didn't get changed at all. They still cost only 500 each. But they cost now a little bit more command points, as you can see. They used to cost only 45, now they cost 60. So you won't be able to spam them that many times, unlike before. Indeed, you will have to make multiple slaughterhouses to increase your command points first. The second troll is joining the battlefield as well. And that should be more than enough for Traki to defend against those goblins, wo goblin warriors from Fairy. On the other side, we have also... Um, more goblins coming from the middle, 3 battalions, Warchan is still available, but again, those trolls are gonna be very hard for Fairy to deal with, at least for now, and he will have to make multiple of these goblin archers for sure. One of them is not gonna be enough, as you will need some burst damage to take them down fast enough. Um, smart move here from Fairy definitely to disengage, he knows there is no point of sending those 3 goblin warriors forward. Orcs are about to scout, that's all they can do in this situation, they won't be able to deal any economical damage to the player from Belgium. Alright, Warchan, unused so far, and so is the Eye of Sauron, we have 400 command points for Mordor, and 400 command points for the Goblin faction. We have also Orc Arches on the field, 
and actually two of them to defend against those goblin warriors. I think Fairy likes to use his trolls to go for a push instead. Okay, so we have two orc pits now. He's gonna make more of these orc arches, they cost 250 each. And he's gonna make more goblins, I mean orcs, they are the cheapest units in the game. Alright, Fairy will be finally able to creep this work layer now. That's gonna be his second work layer. And Traki was just securing the first work layer for himself. Two power points for Fairy and three and a half power points for Traki actually, so he's a little bit ahead. Eye of Sauron will be used for defensive purposes. We have a lot of orc archers on the field actually. And I think they will be able to protect this slaughterhouse from getting destroyed. Luckily for Fairy whatsoever is the fact that he was not using his war chant, but he's gonna use it here. And the troll is gonna be taken down, ladies and gentlemen. That's huge. Spiderlings are a great choice. They will be outrunning the troll. And if the troll stops to deal with them, he has a lot of goblin archers to deal the damage with the poison arrows, which was not even used. <laughs> Alright. Okay, there is a troll from Traki. But it's a risky move. He might be able to take down the tunnel, but he might die afterwards. I don't see a coming out from this situation anymore. He's gonna eat one of these orcs, but you can see yourself now. The find an orc to eat ability has a cooldown. And also this orc battalion was able to take down another tunnel, which is really nice from Traki. But Traki now has to be careful because a massive counter attack is all about to happen. 4 power points for goblin player fairy, 400 command points available, 450 command points available and 6.5 power points collected from Traki, the motor player. Alright, so we have a lot of orcs for defensive purposes, including those orc archers, 2.5 battalions. And we have also Easterlings now, because I think he might face against spider riders later on. I see even one more builder and Barry was also able to save one of those goblin warriors level 2, so he will be respawning over time. And yeah, Barry will struggle to deal the damage, there is even a tower from Traki, protecting this pathway, which is kinda small pathway, and this tower will be doing a great job. By the way, talking about towers, in the version 8.4 they got nerfed as well. They only have now 1500 health, and they used to have 2500 health instead. Um, funny fact is that the goblin player but also the model player are not going for heroes just yet. So I feel like in a matchup like this for the model player, Mouth of Sauron could be a great choice, Gothmog could be a great choice, obviously very cost efficient hero. Uh, with the leadership for the orcs, so you might have double buff action all the time. I mean obviously the goblin player fairy can always go for the cave bats and he has almost the power points to do that. To do that. 475 command points, he's almost command points capped, so has to expand, but he can always also build those battle expansions, each, every single one of them is gonna increase the command point limit by 75. Alright, we might have a massive battle in the middle of the map. And it looks like Traki is not going for any more trolls, as he lost the two trolls he had on the field. No, I take it back, he's actually gonna go for one more mountain troll from the troll cage level 1. I mean, I like the way that Traki is playing that. You know, offense is the best defense, obviously, and as long as he can keep pressuring the goblin player fairy, he doesn't need to be too much careful about the counter attack. And also the fact that he's only two power points away from getting industry unlocked is actually very powerful. As we know, Mordo is a faction which struggles early on but with the orc spam. I mean, the trolls were still helpful for Traki, definitely. He's now a little bit more than one power point away from industry, which is gonna be a huge power spike for the model player Traki. Six power points collected for Fairy on the other side. You might invest those points for the Keith Pads. Which, by the way, not only gonna debuff the enemy units, no, but it's also gonna nullify the leadership from the Eye of Sauron, for example. Alright, so the troll is here. And there is not enough to take him down fast enough, but he's gonna use Warchant now on a small tiny group of units and was not able to buff those three battalions of goblin archers. Alright, so one goblin, two goblin archers, and they're actually dealing a lot of damage to this troll, even without the poison blades. Poison arrows, I mean. The troll is getting bursted down. Kinda surprising that I was... I'm pretty sure in the version 8.3 they got they was they were actually a little bit tankier than that, so they might also get nerfed or got nerfed potentially in terms of armor against arrows. Spider riders are joining the battlefield as well. 
The troll will be barely able to get away, he can always eat the orc and that's gonna be the case, but you can see already the 30 seconds cooldown makes it so the troll can't heal back to full health by eating two orcs instead of only one. Alrighty. So we have almost 10 power points collected also for the goblin player and industry finally unlocked and used on this slaughterhouse house here in the backside which is almost level 3 by the way. And the fact that the troll from the mother player Traki was able to take down this tunnel before means he has the advantage with 3 slaughterhouses hitting almost level 3 at pretty much the same time. Okay so we have 2 trolls now, easterlings and a lot of orc archers. Let's see how much damage the mother player Traki will be able to deal. We have also a, a tower from the goblin player. Every single tower, by the way, now has only 1500 health, so it's much easier for you guys to take them down. So you don't need to be too much worried about the enemy towers anymore. But by the way, this tower nerf doesn't include the lone tower summon from the Man of the West faction. So the lone tower summon will have still 2500 health. Alright, the troll is getting damaged big time from those goblin arches, but before he goes down, he will be able to take down many of these units. He will be still dying. And you can see yourself, the nerf is coming in clutch as this troll is dealing massive amounts of damage to this troll with the rocks. One more hit is gonna be needed and the tower is gonna be taken down. Very well done here from the model player Traki. You can now always go to the range attack and eat a orc immediately, but it's on cooldown as you can see yourself. So he can't do that right now. Six and a half power points collected by Traki. He might go for the war chant to make his unit stronger. And we have Mouth of Sauron joining the battlefield, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so Mouth of Sauron I think is a great choice against spider riders. You can always chase them down. He deals a great amount of damage and especially once he's level 4 with the doubt ability, which is an active debuff. You can make the enemy units really weak. And we will have actually Cave Bats and Tainted Land pick from the Goblin Player Fairy. So he's not gonna go for the Spider Ally Summon, which might be very effective in this situation. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking, because Fairy wasn't able to deal any economical damage yet to the Mortal Player Trucky. And you don't want that. <laughs> you don't want to be that much behind against Mordo because we know the Mordo scaling into the mid to late game is actually insane. We have 5 power points collected after having all the 5 power points from the spellbook of the goblin faction. 650 command points, but he has also one of these battle expansions. The transition now into the fissure after 4 goblin caves and a spider pit level 2. And 0 heroes still on the field for the goblin player fairy. We have even now some black orcs coming from the orc pit level 2 by the way. This orc pit is level 2, he has also 4 orc pits to just keep up with the spam of the goblin player. I mean, hero advantage definitely on this side from the model player Traki. And this Mouth of Sauron is gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger all the time. The Goblin Spider Riders though, they were kinda running it down. And just feeding more and more power points to the Goblin to the model player Traki. Level 3 now, and again level 4 is gonna be very effective. Tainted Land is gonna be used, which is gonna replace the War Chant, so he's gonna be buffing his units now. Mortal player can always pick his own Tainted Land and put it on top of the enemy Tainted Land. This way he will get his own Tainted Land and also get rid out of the enemy Tainted Land. So it's a win-win situation. The troll has been unfortunately taken down for the Mortal player Traki. 7 power points collected after Eye of Sauron, Industry and the Tainted Land. 875 command points available though, that's impressive. Again 725 but you can see yourself. Barry has barely any units around anymore. He's gonna have the Wildman of Dunland summon though, which is gonna be used defensively to deal with the spam. The wielder from Fairy has been taken down as well. And we will have Tainted Land now from the model player Traki being used offensively. That means the, those units, and especially Black Orcs, they are very strong. Easterlings are very tanky as well, but we have now half twelve Swordsmen joining the battlefield as well. I mean, don't get too much... Uh, fooled about, um, about the command points because he has four goblin caves so remember that and he will be definitely getting more and more units every single second on the field but again against Mordo you don't want to be the one who only defends you want to actually be the one who actually puts pressure on Mordo because even though goblin faction is also strong later on I feel like 
There are barely any factions that can keep up with the power of the Moro faction in the lead game. Because he might get Black Riders on the field, he might get Catapults on the field, he might get two Felbies and even a Witch King on the field. Three Flyers, by the way, for the Moro faction, which is amazing. Alright, so we need to keep an eye on Mouth of Sauron, he's almost level 4, just trampling down some of those Goblin Warriors, no big deal. There is another tower from the Moro player and he's building even more of these. This tower is still remaining and he even, he even upgraded that with Fire Order upgrades by the way. So it's gonna deal more damage now. 750 command points for Goblins, 1000, that's full command points by the way for the Moro player. Industry is ready once again. And I feel like... You will need something like Spider Ally Summon to take down those level 3 slaughterhouses as soon as possible. He's just getting too much money and too much command points from these 3 structures right there. Warchant is gonna be available for Fairy for the next fight. Unlike the Warchant, Tainted Line and Eye of Sauron are still on cooldown from Trucky. And there we go, boys. We have a Fell Beast, and his name is Morgomir. And Creature Ability can be just used here. But he's actually losing so much health and he doesn't use the Screech just yet. Gonna use the Screech almost after killing every single unit. He lost 50% of his health and that's why a hero like Gore kills the Goblin King would be very important in this situation for the Goblin player fairy because Gore kills the Goblin King has a Skull Totem with level 2 actually, which doesn't only give you buff. Just like Tainted Land, 50% increased damage and armor, no, he's also gonna give you Fear Resistant, which again is very important against the Moro faction, who has not only a Felvis, he has two, even three actually, but also like a Gatewatcher expansion or Mordor Catapults with the Skull Shots Mo and Drama Trolls with the Roar ability. So, so much fear in the Moro faction you need to deal with eventually. So having a anti-fear is going to be very important. 11 power points collected by the Moro player Traki. He has almost full command points, so his resource income is looking great. Felbeast, Morgomir is gonna creep the troll there at the top right side. On the other side, 8 power points collected by the goblin player Fairy. He has Wildman, Cavebats, Tainted Land and Warchant available. And he has Spider Riders, Goblin Archers mainly and Goblin Warriors. He didn't go for too many um, half troll swordsmen, which makes sense because they are very expensive. And Moro has 2 heroes against 0, so we have Mouth of Sauron with the Doubt ability being ready for the next massive fight. Then we have a Fell Beast and the Screech ability from the Fell Beast, which is not getting countered by all means from the Goblin player, by the way, is gonna be also potentially ready for the next massive fight. Alright, so we have Mordor at the bottom side. There is a tower coming up from the Goblin player, uh, but he has Black Orcs around, so I think he doesn't need to be too much worried. And the effect you are able to see now is the Horde bonus, so they're gonna deal 25% increased damage. And you can now see yourself. The tower is gonna get melted down and the builder is gonna die the second he's done building. So I think uh, Fairy lost up to 3 or 4 builders in total in this game. And that's gonna hurt him big time. Especially for those mobile factions like Dwarves and Goblins. The builders are very important in any stage of the game. And those towers from the model player are doing a great job. Giving him a lot of vision and also a lot of protection. And Goblin Warriors, even though the tower is nerfed, are gonna struggle to take it down. And they're gonna need some... I mean, Fairy has to invest and waste so many resources to commit to those towers. With a massive fight at the bottom right side. Oryx with Eye of Sauron and Warchan, I'm assuming. Yeah, they have double buff right now. Awakened Worm is gonna be ready for Trucky as well. Which can be devastating for those structures, both resource buildings but also production buildings from Fairy. And look his money, boys. Like he has 4000 resources collected already. He might go for a second Felbeast. He might go for the Witch King himself in this game number one in the best of five. Screech will be used. Morgomi is almost level four. In the worst case scenario, he can always get dismounted, which is gonna give him much more resistance. The worm was used, will be repositioned himself and look the damage now against the level 3 tunnel. He's bursting it down, 2 hits needed. Getting damage a little bit here from the tunnel level 3 but it's not a big deal. And because of that, Goblin player is losing more and more command points and obviously also a lot of resource income. 
might go for the lumber mills and yeah that's gonna be needed he's gonna also go for the scavenger because he needs some sort of resource income he has a lot of money which he's not using the worm might even be able to finish off this tunnel here but it looks like he won't have the time for that or will he i think he does he might deal a lot of damage to the structures behind as well. Look at this damage. One-shotting a goblin cave in a level 1 tunnel. That's how powerful a worm is. Level 4 is still. Doubt ability is gonna be available for the next fight. Wildman of Tunland and Warchant are gonna be available as well for the goblin player fairy. But he has, you know, less than half of the command points available from his opponent, the mortal player Trucky. Who is playing a great game. And a great performance overall in the WCS of this year. Full command points, has an incredible amount of resource income, and he's gonna get his Witch King on the field as well. Who now? I mean, no man can kill him, we all know that. And unfortunately for the Goblin player, he doesn't have Mary and Eowyn combination, which is gonna be needed to kill this mighty Witch King. Where's uh, one of the strongest debuffs in the game, by the way, with level 2. Alright, so two flyers at once and he was already struggling to deal with one of them. Doubt ability will be used, he's splitting those units. But with the doubt ability, the damage nerf, the Witch King is gonna clean up everything. Trolls are committing as well and this one looks like the first game is gonna go in favor of the model player Trucky. But that's only the beginning of the best of five series. What a beautiful performance from the model player Traki. What a beautiful performance from Traki in general. He was not in, only able to win the group stage, but also being able to win against Andy-san in the best of three of the group stage. Traki is popping off this year. And I'm excited to see the game number two between Ferry from Belgium against Traki from Jersey Boys. And we're gonna jump right into the game number two after the commitment of the motor play on the fortress. There we go, the game number two is gonna begin now. Alright boys, this time we have the orange Isengard player Trike on the left side against the pink Engma player Fairy on the right side. Both players were pre-picking the factions by the way, no one is picking random in this best of five series. We will have two males and two furnaces for Isengard player. Trucky, who is leading the series 1-0 so far. This is the map Westworld edits, by the way, boys. We have the troll layer in the middle of the map. We have in total of four ward layers. Two of them are protecting those signal fires. They got also kind of moved a little bit from the top right corner to the kind of in the center. Because if you didn't know, in the version 7, the signal fires, they used to give you CDR, aka cooldown reduction on your PowerPoint abilities. Now they give you vision control instead. Alright, so three males into the Doll of the Kingsman. And we have two furnaces into the Uruk pit, into the third furnace from Traki, the Isengard's player. Interesting matchup, and also kind of interesting that Fairy picks the Engma faction against Isengard. I feel like that's a tough matchup for Engma. And since Fairy is, as far as I know, a one trick goblin player, I'm actually surprised big time. So we have the second Hall of the Kingsman coming up already. No, it's not a uh, Hall of the Kingsman, it's a Troll and Wolf then. So he's gonna go for the transition into the Wolf Packs and Wolf Riders. On the other side, we will have Pikeman start from Trucky. He's building another Furnace to get more resources and increase his command points. And he might go for the Creep in the middle of the map or for the work layer at the bottom left side. I mean, he has many options. He can also go for this Creep at the top left side instead. On the other side, we have Troll Master units, and I think one of them is gonna turn potentially into the Wolf Riders. Let's see if this is gonna be the case. Not the first one, though. He's gonna get them into the Gundabad Warriors instead. And Pikemen are gonna creep indeed the work layer at the bottom left side. And then I, I hope at least he's gonna capture also the Signal Fire, which is gonna give him a lot of vision control. Oh, be careful here in the middle of the map. Just in time getting away. I mean, if you are unlucky, the Troll might kill your Troll Master. And Troll Masters, they have a lot of benefits, but also a lot of disadvantages. As when you lose the Troll Master, for example, even though all your units are alive, you will definitely still lose the entire uh, army, the entire battalion. Alright, we have Wolf Packs coming now. Um, next, he's gonna go 
for more Trailmaster units. And the second one is also a Wolf Rider Battalion, by the way. The Gundabad Warriors in a 1v1 situation, they don't stand a chance against the Urukai. Urukai are just much stronger than those units, which makes sense because they cost 400 each, with that also double the cost of the Gundabad Warriors. But the Wolf Riders, Warchen is gonna be used defensively from Draki, offensively from Fairy. Nice trample, but it does almost no damage. Because Urukai are so tanky with the shield ball formation and hold ground stand. The pikemen are coming, they are getting trampled down multiple times. Eventually they're gonna die, but the pikemen are gonna be here to protect them. Gundabad warriors, they can fight against the Urukai even when they are so low. And this fight will be nicely defended. This attack will be nicely defended by Trucky. But I, let me tell you that much, those wolf packs, they are one of the best counters against those pikemen. As you can see yourself, they are getting one-shotted against those wolf packs. However, they need to avoid fighting those Urukai. Very nice done here from Engma player Fairy. At the very same time, I, let me check where these wolf riders are at. They are trampling down one more Urukai battalion and actually taking them down very fast. Very nice done here from Fairy once again. Traki was able to creep two work layers at the bottom left side and at the bottom right side. Engma, but economically, is pretty much untied so far. The only good thing for Traki is the fact that he didn't lose any furnaces just yet. But losing a Urukai is almost as awful as losing one of those furnaces. Because they cost 400 each and are with one of the most expensive swordsmen in the game, alongside with half Swatman swordsmen from the Goblin faction and Black Numenorians from the Engma faction from a Hall of the Kingsman level 2. Okay, so Warchan is on cooldown for both the players. It's gonna be available pretty much at the same time because it was used at the same time. Trike has 400 command points available. So does the Engma player Fairy. This furnace is gonna get committed on and it will be taken down. Yes, now Whiteman of the Unland and by the way, Clan Setting got buffed in this patch. It, you know, it will cost now 100 less than it was before. I mean, even though the, the cost of the Whiteman of the Unland and of these Whiteman Extrovers and also their damage and tankiness didn't get changed at all, but a Clan Setting which costs 100 less makes a start with that structure very possible. Engma now has to, deal with, has to deal with this army really fast. He has Urukai, he has pikemen to protect them against the wolf riders, and he has also a lot of Weizmann of Thunland. They have also work packs coming, by the way, from the Isengard's player Traki. He has three production buildings Work Pit, Land Setting, and Uruk Pit. He's gonna wait for the Warchan to be ready, I'm assuming, and then he's gonna go for a massive push, and Warchan is gonna be ready in the next 10 seconds. One Gundabad warrior is not gonna be enough to deal with such a force, and that's why Fairy has to react to that play really fast, otherwise he will be losing many of these mills in seconds. That is even a level 3 pikeman, and he's gonna go for the torches, which is gonna make those wild men hit like an absolute truck. As you can see now, they have like the torches from the berserkers, that's gonna make them actually very strong and you will be surprised how much damage they're gonna deal even to a Hall of the Kingsman, which by the way is one of the most tankiest uh, furnace, I mean barracks in the game, after the Hall of Warriors from the Dwarven faction. Alright, so commitment is all about to happen. Um, nice trample here actually, he will be able to get away. And because of that attack, which will be defended very nicely, um, that's a really great situation right there for the Engma player Fairy because he will definitely deal with this army. Hopefully, he's not gonna lose many of these wolf riders anymore. And Traki was investing so much money into the upgrade for the torches. They cost 200 each, so a Wildman of Dunland cost 150, and the torches upgrade cost 200. So, if you lose one of these without dealing any damage, you will lose 350 resources. But even if you have only two of them. They are dealing so much damage to the mill, which is level 2, by the way. Warp packs are gonna be taken down. They are level 2, but they won't make it out. Nice defense after all, after losing only one mill. But he was forced to use his Warchan defensively. The Isengard player has Warchan and Kribane. With both are on cooldown, he has collected 4 power points afterwards. 550 command points available for Traki. On the other side, we have 525 command points available for Fairy. He has 8 power points collected, 
but didn't go for either the Felwind or Snowvine just yet. But we shall see, he's gonna try to creep the Warclay at the top left side, but I think those Wildman of Dunland, they will be able to stop those units, even though they are level 3, but Pikemen are very weak from the Engmar faction, unless you go for the big Pikemen, those Hill Trolls, they are one of the strongest on the other side, but those uh, Rudaur Spearmen, I think that's their name, <laughs> they are very squishy and very easy to take down. Almost 9 power points collected, Warchant and Kribin are still on cooldown for both the players. If some Warg packs now, we might see a 1v1 situation against Wolf packs. Wolves against Wargs, there we go, let's see. But they are using whole ability, so... Um, they will deal 50% increased damage and armor. But they will be trapped here, there is no way of getting away and they will be taken down. We have a Warg sentry even on the field, protecting this furnace here, which is pretty nice. Warp is still level 1, so is the Uruk Pit and Clan Sitting. So he's gonna go for the Urukai, Pikeman, Crossbowman, Wildman of Dunland, and Warp Packs for now. There is even a Wall Hub protecting this furnace, which is almost level 2. Ingmar player is forced to retreat. And don't underestimate this, by the way, guys. This is a great defensive structure, definitely, in Rise of the Witch King. Which is a unique structure only for Isengard. We have a lot of wolf riders on the field, and now Isengard's player Trucky has to make sure to make enough pikemen to deal with them. The furnace has been taken down! But, you know, playing with cavalry units on a neutral host, which by the way, every game is on neutral host in the WCS, no one has a host advantage in this tournament, it's always tricky. Because definitely much more micro intense than a normal unit, like an infantry unit or archers. And... As you are not playing on your own host, you will have always some sort of delay. And two seconds delay might make you lose all your wolf riders. All of them <laughs> at the same time. Alright, so Gundabad Warriors, Warchan is on cooldown still, I'm assuming. Uh, Felvin will. Nice Felvin actually from the Engma player right there. I like it a lot. Separating the pikemen from the Wildman of Dunland. Nice trample, and he's gonna lose again a 350 resources unit. Because those units were also upgraded with the torches. A great defense definitely from Fairy, but during all this time, he's gonna also use Snowbind here. 675 command points for Fairy, 650 command points for Trucky. Trucky has two level 2 furnaces. He's expanding quite nicely also at the bottom side of the map, and building multiple of these work sentries to protect those furnaces. Alright, so Engmar now has to do something. Engmar has to deal as much economical damage as he can. So Isengard's player won't be able to spam many many units after losing them all the time. If this makes sense. Okay, nice trample. They are very low now. There is... And the pikemen are, <laughs> pikemen are getting killed from this troll layer <laughs> in the middle of the map, which is very funny. If the neutral creeps are turning against you. Alright, Devastation was also used from Trucky. He has 650 command points and going for the second clan setting now. Two power points collected afterwards. On that, I mean, he's also a little bit ahead, by the way, in terms of uh, power points, definitely, against the Engma player Fairy. We have six power points collected after Snowbind, Belwind, and the Warchant. Oh, you need to demolish this really fast. If you don't demolish that, it's a win win situation right there for Trucky. Not only he will be able to take down the mill. But every single second, those Wildmen are attacking with the pillage ability, they will steal money from you. That means, yes, you will lose money. And this is why, this is, <laughs> this is the perfect situation right there for Trucky. If there is a wall hub, which is really tanky by the way, you can always attack this wall hub with the Wildmen of Dunland. And every time you do that, I mean, since you will need so much time to take it down, you will eventually steal so much cash from your opponent. Which is amazing for Isengard. So, Wall Hub might not be a great idea from any faction against Isengard, as Isen when Isengard has Wildman of Dunland on the field. 650 command points for Engma. No heroes so far for both the players. Traki has 700 command points available. The Furnace here is gonna be taken down. They have a, even a Ballista expansion actually for defensive purposes. Warkbit is still only level 1, no transition been made so far, but he's gonna go for a level 2 clan setting, and I think he's gonna try to get those Wildman Extrovers on the field very soon. One of those mills has been taken down, 
I see two Hall of the Kingsmen only. And both of them are still only level 1. So is the Troll and Wolf then. A nice protection here after all from Traki. A lot of action is going on definitely in this game. Also nice defense at the same time. And this furnace is very nicely protected as you can see. There are two production buildings. And even a ballista expansion. That should be more than enough to defend this. If, you know, against units like Gundabad Warriors or Wolf Packs. Or Wolf Riders. If they are being sent out one by one. The furnace is getting focused down. But you can tell yourself, I mean, those are the weakest cavalry units in the game. Like, they are very weak, even though they cost the same, like on the knights. But if you want to have strong cavalry units instead, you want to go for the snow trolls, that requires you to upgrade the troll and wolf tent to level 2 first. Alright. Engma is building a tower. There are some pikemen still left, and dealing actually great amount of damage to this mill, but this mill should be protected by the Engma player. The Fork Sentry is defending quite nicely. And Fairy, the Engma player, is forced to retreat. On the other side, we have 11 power points. 10 of them is gonna, are going to be invested for the White Alliance summon from the spellbook of the Isengard play, of the Engma player. Fairy will have the White Alliance summon ready. Um, and you can always wombo combo everything. Every power point ability from the Engma faction can be wombo comboed with the Felwind. Like, one of my favorite combos is definitely Felwind and Blight. And after after the White Allies, he might go for the Blight. He will need 15 power points for that. Snowbind is gonna be used. Protect this level 1 mill. And we have now Walder on the battlefield. As... Oh, wait a second, I think he lost one of those Call of the Kingsmen now. That's why he's building this second one once again. Level 2 and a half mill might be taken down. Nope, that's not gonna be the case. As the Wolf Riders are able to protect that. Alright, so the White Allies and Felwind and Warchan are available for the next fight from the Engma player. He has almost full command points, by the way. Isengard on the other side has 775 command points. But remember, he has also resource income from Devastation. From the Pillage of the White Man. And from the Lumber Mills as well. So, even though he has less command points, that doesn't mean that he has less resource income. Alright. There is another tower coming up, but towers are not as powerful as they were before. And if Engma player doesn't pay attention, those mills are gonna get bursted down very fast and Whitemen are gonna steal more and more resources all the time. Even was upgrading that tower with the ice arrows, by the way. So they're gonna deal a little bit more damage. The thing is that Engma ice arrows in most situations uh, is not that it's not that useful. Unlike a fire arrow upgrade, by the way, against ants, it's absolutely useless. Never mind, I take it back. I think the ice arrows from the rangers, dark rangers from the Engma faction, got buffed actually against ants. So ice shot will be dealing more damage now. I mean, it was so ineffective against the ants, you know, the patch before. You will need you will need like a year to take them one of the, to take down one of them with rangers when they have the long shot purchased. Isengard is getting ready for a big attack. And Warchan will be used now. Devastation is gonna be ready and Lucas power points are rising. He has almost 13 power points collected now. He might go after the devastation for the field of fires. Which is gonna increase the resource income. Or oh, Vitalize Summon, Felwind is gonna be used, level 3 mil is getting focused down and Snowbind is still on cooldown, he was using it before on this level 1 mil, to protect that. But the Vites are getting killed so fast actually, he's trying to body block this mill by getting those Pikemen and Gundabad Warriors and actually Wolf Riders are trampling quite nicely and it looks like he will be able to defend himself. Traki making a smart move, kind of trying to split the army, but it's not going to be enough and this mill is also going to get protected. I mean, it could be way worse for Traki. Yes, he was not able to do any kind of damage, but he was forcing his opponent to use both the Felwin and the White Allies summon defensively. Look the money from Engma. It's around 2000 resources collected. I mean, what I feel like... He's gonna need a, are Dark Rangers. Dark Rangers get them level 2 with the Banner Carry upgrade, unlock the long shot, and use multiple times long shot with combina in combination with the Felwind. That's the dream. Because those Wildmen and even Urukai and Pikemen are gonna get killed so fast 
when you have multiple Dark Rangers on the field and I can't tell you what he's saving for. Is he gonna go for Rogash? Or potentially the Witch King of Engmar himself? Even though I'm a big fan of those big boys in Rise of the Witch King like Witch King of Mordor, Witch King of Engmar, Gunsalf from Men of the West, I feel like they could definitely need some buff every single one of them. Because they cost so much that by the time you get them on the field, your opponent will have so many units and it's gonna be impossible for you to deal with that. Orkala is summoned by the way, Wunderbad Orcs um, also got buffed, so it will now summon one additional battalion, because let's be honest, that's the worst summon and it's still the worst summon in the game from Engma, who is also pushing through the bot side. We have full command points and over 3500 resources collected in total. We have also Lords on the field now getting level 2. Many of these level 3 furnaces. And I think he's gonna go for the Witch King indeed. We have Field of Fires now for Isengard and that's what I mean. Now he doesn't need to be too much worried about the money income at all. Because he's gonna get 70% more resources from those trees, from those lumber mills. And you can see yourself. Uh, they bring each time 13 resources and he can build multiple of these on Westfall there are so many trees around So it's a great map and great ability from the spellbook for the Isengard's player And actually when you think about it Isengard has like unlimited resources eventually in the lead game because you can also get your Lords to level 8 Which is gonna unlock the pillage So it's like a scavenger ability from the goblin faction whenever you kill stuff like not only uh, doesn't only count on units but also on structures you will get money all the time you have devastation you have field of fires you have industry you have lumber mills you have furnaces i mean there is so much you can actually build only to increase your resource income which makes sense because isengard units are also the most expensive units in the game you know urukai those are the basic swordsmen from Isengard because Isengard doesn't have a tier 2 swordsman unlike all the other factions. Like, I mean, only dwarves don't have it as well. But besides dwarves and elves and Isengard, am I gonna count all the seven factions now? <laughs> no, I mean, like, in, so in soldiers as well, true. <laughs> okay, I take it back what I just said. I mean, Engma has obviously Gundabad warriors, but also the transition into the like, the Manorians could be made. Same goes to the Goblin Warriors, because then you can always build a Fissure and get those half troll Swordsmen on the field. But Isengard has only his Urukai. Okay, nice Trample, fully committing here to that fight. Lurz is getting more and more experience, and I feel like Engma player is getting Rogash or Witch King on the field, because he was investing so much money now. Let's see what he's gonna go for. I think regardless what he's gonna go for, Lurz is such a hero killer. Like, even if he goes for the Witch King, Lurz can always cripple him down. And yeah, congratulations, you have a very strong hero on the field, but what's the matter if he's never gonna be able to move? So Lurz can cripple him down, there is no way of him getting away. And the Witch King from Engma, unlike the Witch King from Mordor, can't even fly. So Lurz is almost level 5 by the way, which is gonna unlock the leadership. Engma doesn't have a way until Witch King gets level 2 to nullify the enemy leadership. Lurz is running for his life, he should be able to get away. Nice trample on those crossbow men though. 13 power points collected by Engma. I think Blight is gonna be very much needed. And yes, we have the Witch King himself joining the battlefield. Waldo got actually crippled down by Lords. That means Lords' cripple is gonna be on cooldown. But Waldo is gonna get killed unfortunately. He was level 4 and was only one level away from getting the reinforcement summon. The summon healman ability. Witch King level 1, 6000 health. And 404 melee damage. That's incredible. Let's compare that with Lourdes, shall we? I think Lourdes has to be somewhere around inside the army, kinda. He's here now. He's gonna deal 100, uh, 255 damage, melee damage with level 4. But remember, the carnage is gonna increase that by 200%. So he will actually deal more damage than Witch King when he has carnage active. Um, we're gonna just focus on the power points now from the Engmar player because the Blight can actually kill everything right there. He's gonna have uh, enough power points for the Blight, I'm assuming at pretty much the same time as Felwind is gonna be up again. So felwind blight combination is very effective against infantry units. Because you will need so much time to get away 
and because of the fell wind you won't be able to get away for like a couple of seconds and this is enough time oh okay light ally is summon Lutz is hitting level 5. Lutz, uh, Isengard also using the Warchan. Double buff action for the Isengard army right there. Level 2 is gonna be unlocked. That's gonna nullify the enemy leadership, but he got crippled down. That's what I was saying. 15 power points collected for Engma. He's gonna go for the Blight indeed, which will be used now. He's gonna wait for the Felwind. It's gonna be available soon. Will be used now. And now, the army of the Whites is gonna get summoned from the Engma player. Look how many Whites he has now on the field. Lutz has to run for his life. You can't fight that. You don't want to fight that. I mean, homely. <laughs> I love this ability so much and I feel like this is one of the strongest, if not the strongest army killer abilities with 15 power points. Because unlike Watcher, which can also burst down an entire army, this one is not going to kill the army from your opponent, no. But he's going to turn them into the whites and you will get the chance to control those whites for a actually quite long time. You have around like 30 to 45 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, to control those units. So it's like the min situation. Not only you kill enemy units, no, you get also units to fight for your faction, for your side. You know what I'm saying? Very effective. Oh, the knockback though. I mean, yes, he's sitting like an absolute truck. The only problem is he is slow. Like, he has very low attack ratio. Look at this. You will need so much time, like a lot of reload time. Which makes sense because his attacks kind of are hitting like an absolute truck. That's why it would be kind of broken if you could attack very fast with this guy. But, you know, I feel like he could be much more useful than he actually is. Because if you compare Witch King of Engma to any hero like Glorfindel from the Elven faction or uh, Lourdes from the Isengard faction, he is way worse than them. And he costs like way more than them. So let me know guys in the comment section below. What do you guys think about the Witch Kings of Rise of the Witch King? Like from the Engma faction, from the um, from the Moro faction. And also what do you guys think about Gandalf? Because I feel like Gandalf could also use a great buff. Since, let's be honest, how many times we see this guy? <laughs> like almost zero times so far. Okay, committing to that work sentry. The work sentry is doing such a great work actually. Look at this. Defending very nicely against those Gundabad warriors. And before you can actually deal with one of them, it's gonna respawn more and more works all the time. The and power points collected, full command points still for the Engma player. And we will have to summon Dragon, ladies and gentlemen! Holy quackamole! Draki is so much ahead in terms of power points, and because the mistake of Fairy was to go for 10 power points, 10 power points. So, if he didn't go for the summon orcs, he would have 22 by now. That's why making a great choice of what to pick, when to pick, is actually very important. And he's gonna lose all the barracks, by the way. Only the troll in Wolfden is remaining on the field. But that's gonna be changed very soon. And actually, Fairy is falling apart right now. Witch King is left alone here, which might be a mistake because Engma, uh, Isengard is gonna commit on him now. He's very low already, and there goes the cripple, there goes the hero killer lords himself. You're not gonna move away, my friend Witch King. And even though you are so tanky, but you are just not tanky enough. And the Witch King of Engma is gonna be taken down by the Isengard's player. You know what Sauron was saying all the time, give me a v army worthy of Mordor, and I feel like this army from Truckee is indeed worthy of Mordor. Engma is actually expanding around the top right side, building multiple towers and multiple Hall of the Kingsmans. Kingsman, because man is already the plural, I think. <laughs> in, 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 you know, English lesson with Shanks. Alright, so three towers, but they are only protecting this side and not this side. And when Isengard moves from this side, these towers are gonna be meaningless. He's gonna build multiple of these uh, wall of expansions and the power points from Isengard are rising more and more. 15 power points collected by Fairy. He's hoping to get 25. But can he get it though? It's like 10 more power points and he has not that many units left on the field anymore. And look his resources. Are also not looking great. Isengard has even armory. Yeah, he has armory. 
Yes, uh, purchase the Forge Blades on these Extrovers. Now they're gonna deal even more damage. Alright, Engma is fighting until the end, which makes sense. That's the first game of these players, so it's a double elimination tournament that we got for the WCS. World Championship is a double elimination tournament. That means if you lose one of your series, it's not the end for you. Because you're gonna drop down to the loser bracket. You can still end up winning all the games afterwards and even reach the grand finals. Alright. Fully commitment, the last barracks remaining on the field. You know, the fortress is still up on the field, but he has almost no money. Blight is on cooldown now for a long time. And it's not gonna be ready any soon. Isengard is getting more and more units on the field. And the game-changing moment definitely was when the Summon Dragon, which is, by the way, the best ability when you want to kill enemy structures from Isengard player Traki was summoned. And also the, the decision-making from Fairy to go for the Witch King. I like to see that, but the problem is he's just not very efficient and game-changing. And, you know, he was definitely... He would be in a much better shape, definitely, if he would get some of those Dark Rangers on the field much earlier with Longshot. Because that's what you are looking for with Engma. You wanna look for the fight to dominate. And with those units, with Longshot of those Dark Rangers and the Felvind and Blight, you can actually dominate those fights big time. And Witch King, even, you know, either earlier than that, or much later than that. So if you have already multiple Dark Rangers on the field. And if you have already enough units to dominate those fights. Then Witch King can be a great spot. With the incredible powerful debuff. But what's the debuff gonna do for you when you can't win those fights? When you don't have the power to protect your Witch King against Isengard's army. He's gonna even build some Temple of Twilight, fighting until the very end, memeing around. But that's gonna be the end of the game, number two, boys. And we're gonna jump right into the game, number three. Alright, boys, the game number three is all about to begin. This time, we have the pink goblin player, Fairy, against the orange elven player, Traki, on the beautiful map, Erin Lair Edit. One of those maps we have not seen many times in this WCS so far. And in my opinion, this is a hard matchup for the Goblin player Fairy. Because Goblins, they like to play on those big maps like Jungles of Far Harad, like Westfold. And maps like Erin Lair, which are pretty small, should be favoring definitely the Elven faction from Traki. And with that being said, Traki might have a chance to win the series against Fairy 3 0. We will have two Malon trees into the barracks. On the other side, we have two tunnels into the Goblin Cave, into the third Goblin Cave. Alright, so let's see. Um, I think because of the tiny pathways, the Elven player can always build a statue and then just defend, play passively. Defend yourself the first 10 minutes into the game, then you can... Oh, he cancels the barracks and actually going for the stable instead. Interesting. On the other side, we're gonna have the second Goblin Cave coming up for the Goblin player, Fairy. He's gonna get those Goblin Warriors first, and the Builder, we need to keep always an eye on the Builder from the Dwarven players and from the Goblin players, because they are very important. As those factions are quite mobile with their tunnel system. Powerpoint wise, Rallying Call has been picked from Traki, and the Goblin player Fairy didn't pick anything just yet, so he might go for the Cave Bats, or also Warchan and Tainted Land are all great possible options for the... Uh, for the Goblin faction. Alright, the builder is gonna get sneak is gonna sneak through. Might build a tunnel right there, or maybe a little bit far behind. And the second builder from Barry is building a third goblin cave. And the first goblin warrior is arriving on the battlefield already. And just checking this fork creep first. If the elven player is creeping or not. And he's gonna go for the attack. Luckily for Traki, those Revendal Lancers, they will be out just in time. To deal with those goblin warriors. Very nice timing right there for Traki. The builder from Fairy is not doing anything just yet. I think he doesn't have the money for... He has actually the money now for a tunnel. And that's why he's gonna build one of these. Three goblin caves, a lot of goblin warriors first. And that means those lancers, they will be very effective in this situation for the Alvin player Traki from Jersey. Who is 2-0 ahead by the way. Alright. The goblin warriors spam all the time, and even though 
you know, the Lancers or the Gondonites or any calf unit pretty much in the Rise of the Witch King are a great counter to the Goblin Warriors. You want to still be careful because if you trample into too many of them at once, you will get slowed down and you might die afterwards. A lot of Goblin Warriors are inside the tunnel. And he's gonna go for the Spider Pits now. Rallying Call is available, by the way, for the Elven player Drucky, and Warchan is available for the Goblin player Fairy. I'm actually wondering if he's gonna go for the attack with those Goblin Warriors inside the tunnel. He might also try to defend himself. Alright. Okay, slowing them down. Nice micro here from Drucky getting away barely. Doesn't want to overcommit, which makes sense. But you can see yourself, I mean, those Goblin Warriors. But he has two battalions now, that's gonna change everything. Rallying Call is gonna be used. And Goblin player might actually lose two of his tunnels at once. That would be a disaster. Luckily, he's gonna creep the work layer here at the bottom side. The tunnel is gonna get focused down. And it's gonna get bursted down. Warchan is gonna be used defensively. He's gonna try to body block those units. He's gonna slow them down a little bit. But it's not gonna be enough to stop them. And he might even commit now to this tunnel, which is unprotected. And... If he clumps very, really nicely, and that's what he's doing. Nice clump here from Trucky, dealing tons of damage. Goblin Warriors are not able to do anything about that. And two of the most important tunnels from the Elven player are taken down. Not only that, but he will also be able to get away with both his Lancers. That's actually huge. That might be a GG move right there. Luckily for... Nah, he was not even able to creep this work layer for some reason with those Goblin Warriors. And he will definitely need some sort of money... From the map so he might go for both the work layers at the same time because he will need some treasure to compensate the losers against those revandal lancers and as they both were able to get away he will always build a well and then they will have the regeneration over time and they should be good to go nice creep here all right the tunnel is still remaining on the field and Traki is taking also one of these creeps for himself at the bottom right side now we have multiple archers ready to defend, and it's gonna be hard for the goblin player fairy to deal the damage he's looking for. One creep for both the players, and actually fairy wasn't able to creep this work layer just yet. He's gonna go for his own work layer at the top left side. Alright, I see multiple goblin warriors and warchan and rallying call are still on cooldown. Three power points collected almost for fairy. Three power points collected for Traki. 400 command points and 500 command points actually for the goblin player. But that doesn't mean too much in this situation because those Revander Lancers are respawning over time. One of them is almost level 2 as well. And Goblin player is kind of trying to attack with small groups of units which might be a mistake. Even though this side is kind of unprotected from Traki, so he might lose still some of those Malon trees potentially. But don't forget about those Revander Lancers. At the same time, also another group of Goblin Warriors are gonna commit to this Malon tree at the bottom right side. Oh, that's a mistake here from Traki potentially. He might lose his Gondor. I mean, the Vandal Lancers, and that's gonna be the case. One of them has been taken down. And that's really great. Nice commitment here. Two Malone trees are down. That's a lot of damage dealt, which I was not expecting. But nice micro and nice macro here from the Goblin player. He's also gonna be able to take down those Pikemen. It's a great map overall for the Elven faction because those units they can get stealthed around the trees and on Erin layer we have trees all around the place. Might commit to that Malon tree but the Lancers are gonna be just in time to trample them down. So the protection is gonna be real. But more units are coming now and Fairy is actually putting in so much work in the game number 3. Because that's his last chance otherwise he will be losing the first round and gonna drop down to the loser's bracket. He's gonna be able to take down this Malon tree anyway. That's actually massive. Only one Malon tree and two Malon trees are remaining from the start of the game around the fortress. And that's why the Elven player is now only at 425 command points against 525 command points for the Goblin player Fairy. Who has collected almost 7 power points after Warchant. 6.5 power points collected after Rallying Call for the Elven player Trucky. They have also Spider Links on the field now from the Spider Pit level 1. That's the production building number 4 for Fairy. And Elven player has to play very defensively and he's indeed gonna build a statue here to get some leadership. Which can by the way get negated by the Keyfats. Malone tree is getting focused down. 
but only with very tiny group of units, so it's gonna be protected, no big deal. Barry was able to get the, his uh, third work layer, so he was also getting a lot of experience and power points, obviously. And the spiderlings are almost level 2. Alright, he's already gonna build some lumber mills, which is interesting. He will need some sort of more resource income as he's building a fissure. He will need a lot of money to actually be able to keep spamming Goblin Warriors, Spiderlings and even half those Swordsmen at once. Warchan and a big push is incoming, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. A huge army of Goblin Warriors are moving through this tiny pathway and he's gonna split them. He's gonna split those Spiderlings from the main army, but nice positioning here from Trucky! He's behind the rocks! How is the Goblin player gonna be able to commit to that fight? But the Spiderlings though, he has so many of them! But I like the protection here, look the positioning here of the Alvin army boys, that's incredible! And he's actually killing so many Goblin Warriors, luckily those Spiderlings are still doing work and they were able to take down one of those Malon trees regardless of the defense. It's a bad situation right there for the Elven player, he's gonna lose so many Lancers to those Spiderlings. And because of the resource income, because of the map control of Fairy, it doesn't matter for him as, as much as it matters for Trucky to lose those units, if this makes sense for you guys. He's also gonna lose those Elven Archers, and each, every single one of them is normally cost 300, but they're gonna cost a little bit less now because of the Well, which by the way is gonna, or because of the Statue I mean, which by the way is gonna reduce the infantry uh, cost, and it's stacked, so you can actually make multiple of these and reduce the cost of your... Lorien Warriors, Pikemen, Lorien Archers, and even those Mirkwood Archers. Obviously, the more effective it is on expensive units like Noldor Warriors and Mirkwood Archers. Alright, so the last couple of minutes, I gotta say, the side of the Goblin player is pretty much untouched. He has Spiderlings on the way, still uh, half half Pikemen even here on the field. After all, Swordman are gonna join the battlefield as well, and he keeps up the pressure all the time, and being able to take down multiple Malon trees all the time is actually massive. I like the aggressive playstyle from Fairy, even after a, after a rough start into the game, he's doing a great job. But the game is not over, it's not even close to be over. He's building two Malon trees in, a, in the first tower with archers inside, and he's gonna go even for the Silverton arrow upgrade on this tower. To make it much stronger than it already is with those arches inside. Double barracks, both level 1 still, and the stable is also only level 1 as the third production building. Nice commitment on the statue here. You will be able to take it down. And then again, we'll make those units also cost more, cost more resources. Kappa? Yes, probably a statue around somewhere. You can see it though. Normally, they should cost now a little. Uh, now, there we go. Now they cost even more because of the statue's passive was actually gone. Lancers are not as effective as I was expecting them to be and Elvin Wood will be used offensively for a single tunnel. That's very risky move and normally you can tell that the Elvin players are always going for the mist against goblins. Why? Because it can't get covered. But Elvin Wood, which by the way costs 10 command points and 10 power points from the Elvin faction can be easily covered by a tainted land from the goblin faction which only costs 5. But you can see the silver tone arrows, he's gonna commit. Battle tower has only 1500 health. But it's not about the health, it's about the damage. Oh, it's about the health actually. You see this damage from those half troll pikemen against the tower? Holy guacamole. They are bursting it down in a second and a half. And he was investing so much money into the upgrade of the silver tone arrow upgrade and then even the tower itself. And he's gonna also lose the arches afterwards, they are level 3. Tainted land will be used offensively from Fairy this time. Almost 8 power points collected by Trucky after Rallying Call and, uh, and the Elvin Wood. We have Wildman of Zunland which will be used on top of those archers. They are buffed from the Rallying Call but I think they're gonna die here very quickly. There are still so many of them but Wildman on top of that is actually very effective against archers. During all this time, Spiderlings and also Goblin Warriors are keeping, are you know, they keep killing those Malon trees one by one, all around the place. And the Goblin player Fairy now, without any expansion around the fortress, has collected 700 command points. We have 600 command points still for Trucky, 
But the problem is, he keeps losing those mala on 3 all the time. That again means that he will need to invest more and more resources into rebuilding them all the time. And, you know, obviously that's something Fairy doesn't have to do. Fairy can just keep making more units and those tunnels, they're gonna hit level 2, level 3, level... 3 is the maximum. I wanted to say level 4, but that's not possible. <laughs> we have also Midwood Archers on the field against Spiderlings in melee range. Oh, he's gonna use the cloak. The just be able to save one of these. They won't be able to take him down anymore. And once those Spiderlings are gone, he can always go to the well and heal up. And losing those spider, uh, losing those Mirkwood Archers like this is a terrible situation. Because they are, yes, the strongest Archers in the game, but also the most expensive Archers in the game. Alrighty. During all this time, we have more Goblin Warriors coming through the middle. The commitment is real. The builder has to be careful. Archs are still doing a great job, but they have zero protection of those pikemen. I mean, he needs pikemen around him to keep them alive against those spiderlings and Goblin Warriors. You will need some sort of tanking damage. You know, you have Archs in the, in the back. And even Gothmog knows about that, by the way. You, you, you remember the moment? <laughs> you remember the moment in the in the Minas Tirith war when Rohirrim were arriving? He was like, "Pikes in the front, archers behind." I mean, even Gothmog knows that. Everyone needs to know that that you will need some sort of protection against uh, for your archers, so you have some front line that can body block, you know, for your archers, so your archers gonna stay alive longer, and they will be able to deal damage in a longer period of time. If this makes sense. Um, on the bright side for the Elven player, he has collected 14 power points. So he might go after the after the Elven Wood for the End Allies Summon, which can be used offensively, obviously. And as long as he can you know, keep saving those Mirkwood Arches all the time, he will have a very strong army. On the other side, we have some upgrades going on on the, on the Fortress of the Goblin player. 500 command points for Elves, 925 command points for the Goblin player Fairy. That's impressive. He has almost command points capped as well. That's more impressive even. He's making a great use of the available command points. Can I build now some of these arrow expansions and giant expansion actually? Because he might be scared of a possible end ally summon. Uh, and that's something he also has to take into consideration because Elven player Draki is only one power point away from that. Almost 11 power points collected by Fairy. After Wildman of Dunland, he might go for the Watcher, for the Kraken. And he's gonna go for another attack, but Mirkwoods are doing a great job defending against everything that the Goblin player has right now on the field. Those Spiderlings are dying like absolute flies. They can't deal with that. Fully Commitment with a huge Goblin army. He's gonna be able potentially to take down one of these level 3 Malon trees. That would be huge. After those Wildman are coming, but Cloudbreak will be chosen and used. Cloudbreak in this situation was definitely the right call. And he's gonna be able to stand them to stand them for such a long time. And the Mirkwoods are cleaning up every single one of them. He might still be able to take down this one, but this one is gonna be definitely taken down. I mean taking down the level 3 Malon 3 would be obviously the perfect opportunity. Level 1 Malon 3 has been taken down, but it's very low now. So even if he doesn't take it down now, he might take it down in a minute and with the next push. 13 power points collected. The Watcher is going to be very important in this situation because you will need some sort of burst damage against those Mirkwood Archers. On the other side, we have 550 command points. Still, he was doing a great job with the help of the Cloud Break to keep his Malon trees alive. Goblin player is capturing the Signal Fire at the bottom side. The Troll layer at the top side is still remaining on the field. We have now multiple... The Malon trees to get some more money from the map. In addition, in addition to the 950 command points he has available, Armory is up on the field level 1. He can only purchase the Venakiri upgrade from the level 1 Armory. So he will need to get that to level 3 if he wants to get the Scavenged Armor purchased on those half troll Swordsmen. And half troll Pikemen, obviously. He's going for the Spider Pit level 2. And he is gonna go for the dragon upgrade on the fortress and going for the fire drake, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know about that. Because fire drake, as powerful as he is, is a glass cannon unit. So he's all about to deal damage, but he can't take damage himself. 
That means, if you are facing against the strongest archers in the game, and we are talking about those Mirkwood archers, right? Then you will need some tankiness. And I feel like, and I'm afraid, that the Fire Drake is not gonna even make it to the Mirkwoods and will be taken down very fast and quickly. But we shall see. And he's gonna go for the end moods now, and I think he wanna go for the siege. Almost 15 power points collected though, for the goblin player fairy, and the watcher is... Oh, the fire drake is devastating those pikemen. You will have the self-regeneration now anyway with level 2.5. Wildman of Dunland is ready, Tainted Land is ready, and the watcher is ready as well, ladies and gentlemen. What? Use it here, right there. That's a perfect opportunity. You will kill three Mirkwood archers at once. I think it's absolutely worth it. And the money from the goblin player is rising as well. You know what would be amazing right now for the goblin player? Goth, I mean, um, Gorkil the Goblin King would be amazing. Is he gonna use Watcher here? That's what I wanna know. He should. That's a perfect chance. And you will kill three Mirkwoods at once. And even potentially the fourth one. And in this situation, Traki needs to expect such a move. Because he knows he has, you know, his Cloud Break ready. So it's just a matter of time that his Watcher uh, from Fairy is also gonna be ready soon. So how we wanna avoid that is kinda split your army. Don't group all of them at the same time. Don't have like five to six Mirkwoods grouped in one single fight because the Watcher is gonna devastate everything. Okay, we have also Mirkwoods here around this side. Elven player has almost 15 power points collected already after the Cloud Break. That's impressive. The commitment now. Ooh, they are lined up against this. No way. Oh, it was a perfect lineup. And he even used the Rallying Call here. Oh, no. He was clumped against this Fire Drake. Yes, the Fire Drake is going to be taken down, but I call it worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Because the Fire Drake can be just getting out on the field for 1500 resources. And those Mirkwoods, they cost 800 each as well. But it looks like he will be actually able to save them. Even though you can't really run away from those Goblin Warriors. And we will have ants, And our answer to that will be the Watcher himself. Hmm. I don't know about that. Because I feel like that's a lot of overcommitment to one summon from Truckee. He was not only summoning the Watcher very defensively, the Watcher is doing absolutely nothing here by the way and just knocking them down. And he was also using the Wildman of Dunland defensively. And the Watcher could be used much more offensively than that, I feel like, because the because the reinforcements he had to back up those ends. I mean, now the Watcher is gone, the ends are still remaining on the field. Nice focus here from Truckee. Trying to take down this level 3 tunnel. One end has been taken down. The extroverts, they need to attack this end really fast. Because two more hits are going to be needed for this level 3 tunnel to get destroyed. Nice fear here. Unlucky fear for fairy. When this happens to you, all you need to do is switch to the porcupine formation and switch back. Unfortunately for fairy, he even lost this level 3 tunnel. Not only that, but he lost his watcher and he lost his wildman of Dunland as well. That's very unfortunate for the player from Belgium. 710 command points for the Alvin player. 600 command points now only for Fairy, and that might be the gaming turnaround. The Fire Drake is gonna get revived soon. And I feel like the Watcher was definitely unnecessary and actually didn't do anything for Fairy right there. I mean, Watcher is one of those abilities you don't want to use against monsters. You want to use them, you want to use it against the archers, against pikemen, against infantry units, because you will end up killing them in one shot. Because the summon damage of the Watcher is actually incredible. And now the Elven player is going for another attack. We have now even an end fear on the field, and he will try to siege. But the Fire Drake is back in the business, boys. And the Goblin player is using Warchant and going for the attack. We have some towers here to protect. Actually, only one tower in the middle of the map. He's gonna potentially go for some more ends, and he's gonna go for a cloud break just in time. He needs to use tainted land. Tainted land is available, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Cave pads is also available. He needs to use both of these very fast. Where is the fire break? I think he's gonna look for a chance. You wanna draw the attention on the main army? Yes, also scavenge armor and yeah, scavenge armor on those half throw swordsmen. We need to keep a, keep an eye on this fire break, by the way. The end is focusing down these tunnels and malon trees. 
Tainted land will be used. Fire Drake is not being seen from Traki. Now he sees it, but it might be too late. He's leveling up so incredibly fast. He's level three and a half already. And he's killing those Mirkwoods in a second and a half. He's burning them down, ladies and gentlemen. They are getting one-shotted and this end is almost level five already. He has to run for his life. Mirkwoods are still dealing tons of damage. Oh yeah, he one-shots the end as well and getting level five and a half, unlocking the Inferno ability, which is very strong against both units and also against structures. We have Mirkwoods now with the leadership with the buff of Riding Cold. That's gonna be enough to force his opponents back, but it's absolutely fine. The Drake is still remaining on the field, if I'm not mistaken. I hope he didn't die. Can't tell. I, I can't see him on the field. Okay, he's here. Behind the fortress, healing up actually. Okay, Inferno gonna be very useful. We have almost 15 power points collected for Fairy now. After collecting 700 command points. On the other side, 760 command points for Trucky. He's using a little bit less than his opponent does, but it's not always about quantity. It's also about quality and those Mirkwoods are worth every single command point, every single resources they cost. They are so incredibly strong. But so is the Fire Drake here. He's healing up over time. The Inferno can be devastating. In this situation, maybe it would be a better choice to not stay grouped. And only one of the barracks is level 2 actually, right? Yeah, only one of the barracks is level 2. And he has also Armory now. The Forge is getting upgraded to level 3 for the Silvertone Arrows. The Fire Drake is gonna jump in. Let's see. Fully committing to that fight. And Inferno might be used here. Does he really need that? That's the question. I don't think he needed that because let's be real, he actually killed more of his own units. All the goblins are dying in a second. You know, half those swordsmen are taking damage over time. The friendly fire is real and he's burning down his own army here. And on top of that, I think the fire drake, oh, finally, he was actually able to get away, that's huge. But I feel like he had so many units around. That he didn't need um, the Inferno being used in a situation like this. I might be mistaken. Yes, the Mirkwoods are scary. But I feel like he had enough half troll Swordman, Goblin Warriors combination to take them down even without the need of the Fire Drake. Look at this tower getting bursted down. Without the Forge Blades, by the way. He didn't even purchase the Forge Blades because he didn't even buy the Forge... He bought it, actually, in the in the armory, but he didn't he didn't purchase it just yet. They have heavy armor only, which makes them quite tanky. Some Mirkwoods were even able to survive. One of them is level 4. Level 1 here. We have Ants. More Mirkwoods are coming from the Barracks level 2. It's gonna also potentially go for more Ants. Also, Silverton Arrow upgrade purchased. Which is getting purchased now on this level 1 Mirkwood Archer. That's gonna make them hit like an absolute truck with the little knockbacks. They don't care about your heavy armor anymore. Trust me. You will see now yourself. Look how much damage they are dealing, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, obviously not one-shotting them, but two-shotting them, in, in, you know, indeed. And that's how strong those Mirkwoods are. And, you know, that is the reason why we call them the best archers in the game. Obviously, after the Nolder Warriors, because Nolder Warriors are like a uh, half-hero unit. And you are only limited to three of these at one time. 20 power points collected, 670, 685 command points, 735 command points available now. For the Elven player Traki. He has only he's only using a quarter of the available command points, a little bit more than that, a third. But the problem is it's enough for now. I mean he has more than enough to defend himself all the time. And if he gets more Mirfoods on the field, he will definitely need a help from a, from a from like an Inferno from the Fire Drake, or you know like the Watcher summon on top of these archers if he wants to win these fights. The builder has to be careful; he's paying attention. The end is kind of left alone here, might be in trouble. Another Malone tree has been taken down, and once again, Truck is playing very defensively. Double Fissure level one, three Goblin Caves, and a Spider Pit level two. The Fire Drake is here on the field, Inferno is almost back up. Committing to that without the Inferno is a mistake. Yes, he will be one-shotting this end, but... Oh, he's gonna die for that and this is not worth it. 
He was not even able to kill the Mirkwoods, they're gonna heal up over time. Yes, he was able to one-shot the end, but was it really necessary right there? I don't think so. 560 command points now. On the other side, the watch is gonna be ready and he has 25 power points collected already. That's crazy. I mean, he can go for the Balrog if I'm not mistaken. And Balrog on top of the enemy units is as powerful, even more powerful than the Watcher. And then you have also the Balrog obviously to kill all the barracks and all the structures from the Alvin player Traki. We shall see. Is he, gonna, is he gonna go for the Balrog? 22 power points almost collected as well. Flat might be ready very soon from Traki. We shall see. So Balrog is ready. Pay attention. And booyah! From 500 command points, dropping down to zero, ladies and gentlemen. He has nothing left anymore, and that's gonna be the end of the game number three, boys. Beautiful. I don't think he's gonna win this one. The Mirkuts are coming. The breath fire is gonna burn down every, f and the game is over. All right, boys. So what happened is it's two one right now for Traki. He is still. Having the upper hand, he needs only one more win to enter the quarterfinals, but Derry can't play anymore today, so the next games, one or two more games potentially, will be played in the next couple of days. For now, we have only three out of five games played. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed these games, please don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe for more content like this, and turn on the notifications as well. i see you next time, take care of yourself, and as always, stay Beyond standards. Peace, boys.